two angles of the, one triangle are equal to two angles in a second triangle, then the triangles are similar. So if you think about comparing these to like proving triangles are congruent, we there was no such thing as like an angle angle or angle 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 because you can have a teeny tiny triangle that's 60 60 60 and you can have a big huge triangle that's 60 60 60 right they're both equilateral but one could be small one could be large now we're saying they could be similar so we're saying one can be smaller than the other it doesn't mean they're the exact same size but it means they have at least two angles the same and then if you think about it if you go back to like third angle theorem says if I know two angle, two pairs of angles are the same, then the third one's also gonna be the same because they all have to add up to 180. So I basically know all three angles in one triangle are matching all three angles in the second, but I only need to know two. And then it would say that these are similar. So like Miss Corey said, you're gonna use this little symbol here for similar. Okay, it's kind of like your shortcut. Um, and we can use, like when we use the, the we don't have to write out angle angle similarity postulate when it asks you to identify if things are similar it will say use a postulate or theorem it doesn't matter um, but you will use angle angle and then the word similarity it's not just a a we use three letters to prove that triangles are congruent uh, you need the similarity part of this to say we're not saying they're congruent we're saying that they're similar so if that's true, all three angle pairs are congruent and then their sides are, are proportional. So you'll also be setting up proportions as we go on. Everybody got on that page or that slide? Okay. All right, so this one just says tell whether the triangles are similar or not similar. This is simple, yes or no. We only have one way to prove them. So let me look at A first. Okay, the only thing marked on A is what? What do those little arrows mean? They're parallel. So if they're parallel, think about these being my parallel lines, okay? You technically have two transversals, right? You've got this one here, and this is the perk of summer enrichment, is it hasn't been that long since you talked about parallel lines. In the regular school year, it has been months since we talked about it. So hopefully these are nice and fresh in your mind. If I were to put a one here and a two here, what's the relationship between those two angles? They're corresponding, and if they're parallel, then what's true about corresponding angles? They're congruent, so this one matches this one. I could have done the same thing on the other side, and I can put a three, oh, it's a different color, three here and a four here, and the same thing is true. These two would be congruent to each other. So if I'm comparing these triangles, as in the top triangle here, and the large triangle here, I already have two pairs of angles that are congruent, which makes this a yes, okay? If it wanted to know why, it would be angle-angle similarity. And they both also share this angle at the top. That angle would be reflexive. So think about in a little bit, we're gonna have to do proofs on these, right? So if I was proving this, if it asked me to prove it, right? The given would be that these two lines are parallel. And then my steps could be angle one is congruent to angle two. And that's because if parallel line, if there's parallel lines, then um, corresponding angles are congruent or the corresponding angles postulate. Um, and I could do the same thing over here with three and four, or I could use this angle at the top. Let's say that's angle A. I could say angle A equals angle A, and the reason would be reflexive. So I only need two of those three because it's angle-angle similarity, but I could use any two of those three. Very good on that one. Okay, now look at B. B is super easy, right? You've got this one matches this one, this one matches this one, no extra work needed, this is a yes. And again, for right now, the only one we have is angle-angle similarity, but eventually you're gonna get three. If they were all mixed together, then the reason here would be angle-angle similarity. Okay, let's go to C. C has this side and this side that match. It's got a reflexive side here. But the only thing marked so far is this top angle. Is that enough information as it's given? No. Can I prove anything further? Okay. 
What happens if I look at the big outer triangle and I ignore that line in the middle? What kind of triangle is that? Isosceles, you remember the isosceles triangle theorem or the base angles theorem that says if these two sides are the same, then what? Then the angles are the same. Now do I have enough information to prove that these are similar? Yep, so this is also a yes. So sometimes it's not straightforward from your diagram. Sometimes you gotta do a little bit of work. So again, thinking in the future, if I was gonna try to make this a proof, I'd use the given that the sides are congruent, that the angles at the top are congruent. And I didn't need this one. And a little bit, you'll see that that might be an option for further, but I didn't need that reflexive slide. What I would have said is that the base angles are congruent or the, because of the isosceles triangle theorem or the base angle theorem, and then I can prove that those two are congruent, similar. Sorry, not congruent, similar. Okay, D. So now these are kind of like wonky triangles, right? There's one here, and then there's a big one here. They both have one angle marked here and here. Just given that, is that enough information? No, there's no, right? There's only one angle, right? Is there anything else there that you can use? There's no isosceles, right? But what's true about this bottom left angle here? Is it in both triangles? Yeah, which means if I was to use that in a proof, that would be that statement would be a reflexive, right? And this is also a yes. And it's, again, would be angle-angle similarity. Questions so far? So they don't always, they won't always be a yes. Sometimes you'll see things like um, where maybe, the, like if you were looking at A and B, this and this would be marked and this and this would be marked. That obviously wouldn't be, right? They match each other, but they don't match triangle to triangle. So this would be a scenario in which it would be a no. Okay, questions on any of those? So for right now, we're saying yes or no. By the next section, we'll have added in three, two more shortcuts. And so you, your yes could be a variety of reasons. Okay, example two looks like this. So first of all, the first piece of information we need from this is the fact that these are parallel and they're marked as parallel because we need to establish a relationship between these two triangles. If those are parallel, then we said that this angle and this angle and this angle and this angle would be congruent because corresponding angles are congruent. Or you could use that top angle again because it's reflexive. Given that, we know these triangles are now similar. So this small triangle is similar to the large triangle. Which leads us to that the sides are proportional. So here's where it gets a little tricky. When we set up the sides, we have two, we've got the left side. Sorry, hang on. Let me, my, do you hear my dog in the background? She's like whining like crazy. Hey boys, can you please come let Penny out? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so when we set these up, we have to do proportions of the side of the small triangle to the big triangle, small triangle to big triangle. So I'm gonna call it purple and purple and I don't even know what that is, like an orange, okay? If I look at the left of the purple triangle, this angle, this side here would be three. That would be proportional to the left of the orange triangle, which is three plus one or four. So you gotta add that together. Then I go to the one on the right and it's five over the whole, which is five plus X. So what we will learn in a little bit, let's pretend we don't know it yet, is that this would be proportional to this and this to this. So I could actually line up three to one and five to X, but we're gonna learn that in a minute for a, there's a theorem about the parallel lines, okay? 
But when I compare, if I'm missing the bottom sides, you can't do that. So if I'm missing the, or looking for one of the bottom sides of this triangle, I have to set it up as side of the small to side of the big, side of the small to side of the big. So you'll see that we'll get the same answer either way here. But if I was given, ooh, I that. but if I was given the bottom side, it wouldn't work that way. So let's work out the, the top right since it's good practice for proportions anyways. I'm gonna cross multiply three times five plus X would equal five times four. So distribute this in 15 plus three X equals 20. Subtract the 15. 3x equals 5, divide both sides by 3, and x is 5 thirds, okay, or 1 and 2 thirds. So when you have this kind of question for your test, the format of your answer is going to be kept as a simplified fraction, not as a mixed number. So keep that in mind, you would actually type this in as 5 dash 3, like that, if that was an answer for your test. So you can kind of practice that format. Yeah. Where I, I so I'm doing the left side of the small triangle to the left side of the big triangle, which is that whole side. Does that make sense? And then the right side over here to the whole right side, which would be five plus x. So we're gonna learn in a little bit that you can chunk it up if it's the sides of the triangle. But if it's involving the bottom of the triangle, which would be like this one or this one, you can't chunk it up. So I can do three to one and five to X and it will work, but I cannot do that with the bottom side. So notice if I solve this, it would also be three X equals five and X equals five thirds, okay? Which would obviously be a lot easier. If you're using the sides, go for it. But if you're involved, I just don't wanna, I just wanna make sure that you're not using it for the bottom. questions on that one everybody good all right now a little bit of multi-step question we've got our triangle on the right hand side again it's marked with parallel marks so I know that these are similar the first question is asking me to figure out what order my letters are supposed to go in so if A, B, C goes A to B to C, that's the right side, right, to the bottom side, I have to do the same thing with that small triangle. I'm going to have to go E to B to D. So the order of the letters is important there. And again, a question like this on your test would do the same thing. It's going to say triangle blank is similar to triangle, and you would just type in the letters of the sides but again it's also gonna you want to make sure you put it in that order okay pay attention to the order of the letters of what they give you so now if that's the case look at where y is y is not one of the sides that's cut so this is why it's really important that we do the the small side to the whole side because this is the small bottom over the whole bottom or the that that diagonal side so if I look at the proportions, I would know that BE would go to BE would go to BA, BD would go to BC, and DE or ED, doesn't matter the order there, would go to CA. So I did the right side of the small to the right side of the big, the bottom side of the small to the bottom side of the big, and then that slanted side of the small to the slanted side of the big. So that actually fills in part C. And this is really weird on your test, like the way that this format will be, like there'll be a question mark here and a question mark here, and it will say BD slash, and there'll be a blank, and you'll have to pick the side for that one. And then it would say DE blank, and there'd be a blank there. And it's like a drop down. So I made each side like a drop down. You just have to pick out which one goes there. So these are not the easiest to format. Just kind of get an idea. All right, so now if that's the case and it wants me to go back, I'll go back to B. It wants me to find Y. Then I have to figure out which of these proportions I have both new numbers for, right? Which is this bottom side. So four to the whole thing, four to seven, is gonna equal y to eight. 
So I did four because that's the side of the small triangle. Seven is the side of the whole triangle. I can't do four to three equals y to eight, and that's the most common mistake made on these kinds of questions. When you're dealing with the sides that are cut, like this side, let's say this side and this side, you can chunk it up. I could say three to four equals x to three. But when I'm dealing with the side that's not cut, the long sides, whether they're the bottoms or the tops, doesn't matter where it is, you cannot chunk it up. You have to say small triangle to whole triangle and small triangle to whole triangle. So four to seven again, because that's the whole side here, would equal y to eight, and then I'm gonna cross multiply this. Four times eight would equal seven times y. 32 equals seven times y. And y equals 32 over seven, which will get left alone. So it'll be 32 dash seven like that on a test. If you, obviously, if it was like a standardized test and it asked for it in a mixed fraction, then you would make that a mixed fraction. So this would be four and four sevenths. But again, for the test, the format will be like that, 32 over seven. Questions on that one? Okay, so then X, let me clear all this off. We've made a mess of, well, I've made a mess of the triangle, okay? X is actually one of the sides. So you have two choices with X. I could either say three to th over three plus X would equal four over seven, or because it's the sides that we're using, I could say X over three equals, now I went first to last, so I have to do the same order here, would equal three to four. Cross multiply, it's four X equals nine, and X would equal nine over four. So I'm gonna leave it as nine slash four, or nine over four, or that would be two and one fourth. So I would get the same answer by doing like X over X plus three equals three over seven. I would get seven X equals three times X plus three, seven X equals three X, plus nine, subtract the three x, four x equals nine, and x equals nine fourths. So you can do the sides either way. You cannot, I wanna stress, 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 you cannot chunk up the sides when you're using the bottoms or the, the side that's not cut. You have to use small to the whole one. Questions on that one? So just like th this is a great review question if you're you know planning for your test there's there's a couple of questions just like this where you have to set up which triangle is congruent to which triangle um, figure out the proportions of the sides and then also find a missing side length all right example four just in case you missed them proofs Okay, this says given AC is parallel to BD, so it's already marked here, AC is parallel to BD, but I'm gonna write that as my first line. Prove triangle AOC is similar to triangle BOD. Now we only have one way to prove this so far, and that is angle-angle similarity. But after the next section, we're gonna have three different ways. So keep that in mind. So I know my last step, whatever it is, is triangle AOC is similar to triangle BOD. And I know my reason already is gonna be angle angle similarity. I just gotta figure out how to get there. So what are two angles that I could mark or two pairs of angles that I could mark as congruent? Okay, so these would be congruent because why? Good, and what's the relationship between C and D? Ooh, so close. Look at where this, they are congruent, but what's, what's, the, what's the type of, who said it? Alternate interior. So you can write alternate interior angle theorem, or you can write if the lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you don't know the name of it, then just describe it.
All right, so that's one pair. I need another pair. What's one I could use? What's on that, what's on that picture that I wouldn't have even need the parallel marks for? The vertical angles, yep. Yeah. So I can use vertical angles still, right? Vertical angles never go away. I could say, but I have to use three letters. Angle A, O, C is congruent to angle D, O, B. And the reason there is the vertical angles theorem or V, A, T. Now I've got two pairs of angles marked as congruent, which means I can go straight to my proof. We didn't need it, but you could have also said these angles are congruent because again, if these are parallel and this is my transversal, those would also be alternate interior angles. So think that there's a lot of times more than one way to do a proof, right? You could have also used that in the place of either of the other two. So all three angles could have been proven congruent. I only needed two of the three. Okay, questions? Any questions on 7 4 overall? <laughs> 7 5 is two more theorem. And this is the first one side angle side similarity. So this one, remember you had an SAS that was just SAS and that proved two triangles were congruent. SAS similarity proves that they are similar. The difference between this and the congruent one is the angles have to be congruent, the included angle, but the sides, we're not saying that the sides are congruent to each other, we're saying the sides are proportional. So if two sides of one triangle are proportional to two sides in a second triangle and the included, it's got to be the included angle, the one where those two sides meet, and the included angles are congruent, then the triangles are similar. So this will shorthand to SAS similarity. You can even put SAS SIM if you're using this in your homework or you're using this um, in a proof. Feel free to make it that short. That's fine. So if you look at this diagram, I've got triangle ABC here, triangle ABC, and then I've got triangle DEF. And the way I would match it is obviously the angles here where the two sides meet are marked as congruent but then 10 over five would have to equal eight over four, which it does. Those are both two to one, okay? And because those are equal, these would be similar triangles. So you'll see this in a couple different ways mixed in with the other triangles. It would just say, are they similar? And it's a yes or no, and then which one? Or you'll see something where it asks for the scale factor. So pay attention to the order of the letters on the scale factor. If it says scale factor of A, B, C to D, E, F, then it would be two to one or two over one. If it said the reverse, if it said scale factor of D, E, F to A, B, C, then it would be one to two. So be really careful with that. That's an easy way to make a mistake um, as far as test goes. Really pay attention to the order of the letters. You wanna make sure you go in the right order. And then those will always be simplified. Scale factor format on your test is gonna say, it's gonna be like that where there's a colon in between, but the directions will tell you that. It'll say when using scale factor, um, put the colon in between like one to two or whatever it is. Questions on this one. So second of three. Everybody's good to move on. Jamie, are you awake? Yeah. <laughs> Side, side, side similarity, SSS, is all three sides. Again, there was an SSS that was congruent. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about side, side, side similarity. So if the sides of one triangle are proportional to a second triangle, then the triangles are similar. All three sides have to reduce to the same ratio. So if I look at the side lengths, it would be 10 to 5 
eight to four, and six to three. Two out of those three is not enough because we have no angles. So it would mean all three of them have to reduce the same thing, which they do, they're all two to one which means that these are similar and your reason would be SSS similarity. Questions on that one? Anybody still copying it down? All right, so shortcut list is angle angle similarity side angle side similarity and side 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 similarity that's it those are the only three ways to prove or shortcuts to prove that triangles are congruent aside from that you would have to know all three sides and all three angles and that's the definition of similarity but these shortcuts those three all right so number one on this example says the measures of the sides of triangle abc are four five and seven the measures of the triangles, the measure of the sides of triangle X, Y, Z are 16, 20, 28. Are the triangles similar? So when you're matching it up, it should be super easy. Go in order of size, right? So smallest one here is four, smallest one here is 16. So four to 16 would have to equal the middle length, which is five, middle length is 20, five to 20. Would have to equal largest, which is seven to, to 28 and then you want to reduce. So do all of these reduce to the same ratio? Yeah, what's that ratio? One to four. So because they're all one to four, it's a yes. If just one of those is not one to four, it's a no. So if I got one to four, one to four, and then two to three, it's a no. It's gotta be all three. All right, B says in triangle ABC, AB is two, AC is five, BC is six. In triangle XYZ, XY is 2.5, YZ is two, and XZ is three. Is triangle ABC similar to XYZ? So why is this different? Because it's actually giving you letters and not just saying, are they similar? So in this case, we gotta be really careful what we match up. So if I were to draw this out, let's just say A, B, C, obviously it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, X, Y, Z, it wants it to be in that order. So A, B is two, that goes here. And then X, Y is 2.5, that goes here, because those are the two that would match up, A, B, and X, Y. Then B, C would match up with Y, Z. So B, C is six. YZ is two. And then AC should match up with XZ. AC is five. And XZ is three. All of these would have to be the same proportion. So I've got five to three. I've got six to two. And I've got two to 2.5. So that's why you have to be super careful because if I did two with, um, like if I did, well, two with two wouldn't even work, but th five and 2.5 and six and three do reduce to the same thing so that if it was four to two, it would work. But if you match them up by the letters that they're giving you, these do not equal each other, which means this is a no. So just be really careful. If it just gives you sizes or sides with like no naming convention on what's similar to what, super easy. Just line up the smalls, the middles, the larges, and see if they reduce the same thing. If they give you letters and they give you a similarity statement like this, you got to make sure that the letters match up. So be really careful with that. Questions on that one? Okay, example two says, if X, Y, Q is similar to X, Z, P, so X, Y, Q, is similar to X, Z, P, does it follow that X, P, Q, the smaller one, is similar to X, Z, Y. I hate this question, I'll be honest. This is super confusing because you'll probably never see anything like this, but I'm gonna go through it anyways. 
okay? X, Y, Q would mean that X matches X, which makes sense. That's my reflexive angle. That means I already have one pair of angles, right? Then it says Y would equal Z. So Y is here, would equal Z is here. So let me do double tick marks there. Those would be equal. And Q and P line up. So Q, which is this Q, because we did this, triangle here this angle would equal this p so that's the q and p that it's referring to because if you had we drawn them out that way the first time so if i look at that and now i look at just the two smaller triangles because that's what i'm really trying to identify is this one similar to this one i have the top angle right? That one's definitely marked as that would be, you know, one of my angles. I either need two sides, two pairs of sides that are similar, or I need all three sides. I know nothing about all three sides yet, but if I just went off the angles, I would need to a different color. This angle to be matched to this and this angle to be matched to this. That I don't have, which means I'm going to rely upon my sides. So for me, I'm a, like a visual person. I would try to set up almost like no, like numbers so I could see it. So if it had said that this triangle X Y Q was similar to X Z P, they're just saying they're similar, right? It doesn't even mean that they have to be congruent. So let's just say that this was two and this is four let's say that this is six and the other side is 12 and then the last side which would be the big one over here would be i don't know like let's just make it eight and then this big side here wait did i do that right uh x yeah the teal should be small i should have done them in the colors let's make this six this would be 16. No, this would be the 8. And this would be the 16. So I'm just making everything double because it doesn't say it's congruent. Now, if I look at the proportions of the sides, does this to this match this to this would be the question. Does 2 to 8 match 4 to 16? And they're both 1 fourth. No matter what relationship I picked out there, those sides would always reduce to be the same thing. So my answer here is yes. The good thing is it didn't ask for much of, a, of an explanation, but I would have to have picked that the angles, I have at least one pair of angles that are congruent, which is the reflexive one, and then also the side lengths. So no matter what relationship you had set up on those side lengths, even if you had just done the side lengths themselves, in my opinion, it's easier to do the sides, it, uh, it would always reduce to the same thing. Jamie! <laughs> Jamie! <laughs> I'm losing you. We're almost done with this. Oh, it looks like you're falling asleep. Okay, questions. Okay. All right, example three. Name the similar triangles and give postulate or theorem that justifies your answer. I'm going to let you try this. So the question is, are they similar? If they are, give a similarity statement, like triangle sim blank is similar to triangle blank. And then what's the reason? Is it angle angle similarity? Is it side angle side similarity? Is it side 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 similarity? Or is it none? Because that could be an option too. All right, so I'll give you a minute or two to work through this. If you wanna stand up and stretch, feel free, okay? But I'll give you two minutes to look at these and then I'll go over them. All right, so if you look at A, right, what's marked is the 80 and the 80. So if I wanted to first say that, okay, those are congruent, I can mark those. What else do we know about these triangles? That's not marked. So if you do this, you said A and C. So 
So those are not, you would have to have another parallel line here. A and C doesn't work. If you're gonna do it that way, E and C work. Okay, but that's only because the 80's there, right? The 80 on the left side would tell you that those lines are parallel, that's the converse to the corresponding angles. And then if that's the case, then I can use those other angles on the other side, that works. Now I've got two. Is there anything else that would work there? Okay, top angles also equal to itself, right? That would be reflexive, so this is a yes. Okay, and I would say triangle. Now, the order you established at first is totally up to you, but let's say I went A, D, E, because that's how the test is gonna give you. It's gonna give you something to start with. A to D to E means I have to go in that order for the other triangle, which would be A to B and then B to C. So there's my similarity statement. And then my reason is angle, angle, similarity. questions on that one okay B I have that top angle right C is congruent for both because it's reflexive I don't know the third side so it eliminates side 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 I don't know any other angle so it eliminates angle angle but I do have the other side information so would 6 to 9 be the same as 10 to 15 Yep, yeah, it would be two-thirds, right? So this is yes. It would be triangle. If I went C, D, E, then it would be triangle C, A, B. I put two Cs. A, B. And my reasoning is side, angle, side, similarity. And the last one is C. All right, so here's a little tricky because of the angles of the way this is turned, right? So I would follow to try to match up smallest to smallest, middle to middle, and largest to largest. I know nothing about any of the angles, which rules out angle, angle, and side, angle, side, but I do have measurements on all, all the sides. So if I started with this small triangle at the top and the smallest one in that, it would be three. And then I go to the triangle on the bottom, this is six, this would be 12 here. So smallest would be six. And then go to the middle ones. Middle would be five to 10. And then go to largest ones, six to 12. And these all reduce to one half. So the answer here again is yes. The order of the letters could be, so if I did K, L, M, I went smallest, then middle, then largest. So I have to do the same thing for the other one. Smallest side there to middle would be K, O, N. There's my similarity statement. And then reason, side, 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 similarity. So this is six in here, I'll do a different color. This one six, this one six. To get that 12, I gotta add those both together. You're welcome. Questions on any of those? So again, another good test prep question. You could get a diagram and it asks you, is there enough information to prove these two triangles are similar? If so, what which, um, which postulate or theorem did you use? And it's a simple like pick from a drop down. Is it ang yes and it's angle angle? Is it yes and it's side angle side? Is it yes and it's side side side? Or is it no? Because that's an option too. So like if I had looked at C and one of those did not simplify to be one half, that'd be an easy no. Everybody good? Questions on those? 
Seven six is proportional length. So instead of just proving the triangles are similar, we're gonna say, okay, what can we do with not only triangles, segments and triangles, but also segments dealing with with um, parallel lines. So there's a that again, if you're shortlisting notes, you're gonna wanna like highlight, or write down. And then we're, every single one of these things ends in a proportion that you solve by cross multiplying. That's it. The, the process is exactly the same once you set it up. It's the setting up that's a little bit different. So this one's called the triangle proportionality theorem. That's the name of it. And it says if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So in order for this to happen, the line inside that triangle has to be parallel to one side of the triangle. So in this case, it's the bottom, but this can get turned any which way. It could be like that, it could be diagonal, it could be any way it wants. It's just gotta be parallel to that last side. And what happens is it cuts these parts proportionally. So AE over ED would be equal to AB over BC. And this is why when you have similar triangles, you can go top to bottom and top to bottom on the sides. It's this theorem that causes that. So if this was a, let's say that this is X, y, m, n, then I can say x over y equals m over n. I could go left, left, right, right, or I could go left, right, left, right. I could say x over m equals y over n. You can go across that way too. I can go bottom top, y over x, and then n over m. I could go right, left, m, x over n, y. I just cannot crisscross. I can't say X over N equals M over Y. You just can't work in that crisscross pattern. All the other ones work though, okay? You can go top, bottom, top, bottom, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, bottom, top, bottom, top. Notice we're not using these sides. It doesn't work with the sides that are parallel. It works with the sides that are cut by that parallel segment. Question so far. Again, that, that has a name, triangle proportionality theorem. So if you want to use it, you can use the name. If you forget the name and it's in a proof, you can always just describe it. Sure. Just make sure you know what that means. Outside of this book, there's no such thing as TPT, right? Like you have to know the description of it, that's all. All right, so here's an application. Notice that these are parallel. So in order for this to work at all, those two segments have to be parallel. You've got to have two, par two segments that are parallel in the triangle. So if that's the case, then CD over DA would equal what? Good. CE or EC, either one, over EB or BE, either one. So if you were filling this out on a test, it would be CE dash EB, or you could switch around those letters. It could be EC, BE. So now B says if CD is three and DA is six, DE is 3.5, what's AB? Can I chunk this up? Can I say three to six is 3.5 to X? No, why not? Good, it's not the sides that are cut that I'm using for here and here, which means I have to do the small triangle to the big triangle. I can say three to the whole side here, which would be nine would equal smaller triangle, which is 3.5, to larger triangle, which is x. 
I can also say 3 to 3.5. So I'm going just smaller triangle this side to this side could equal large triangle to large triangle, which would be 9 to x. So you can use either one of those, but you cannot say 3 to 6 to 3.5 equals 6 to x. You can't chunk it up. I'm going to stick with the first one because it's easier to simplify, right? 3 over 9 becomes 1 third. And then just cross multiply. 1 times x is x. And then 3 times 3.5. I would do 3.5 times, oops, times 3. One decimal place and x is 10.5. That's yours, Paloma? Is it in your living room? I grew up with a cuckoo clock in my living room and every time I had a sleepover and that stupid thing would go off in the middle of the night, my friends would hate it. <laughs> All right, questions on that one? Okay, now let me clear that off. And C says CB is 12, so this whole side is 12. EB is 8. CD is 6. And you're trying to find DA. Can I chunk this one up? Yeah, right? It's the two sides that are hit by that parallel side, so I can chunk it up, but... 12 is this whole side. So what do I have to do to get EC? Good. Uh, not minus X minus the 8, right? So the 8's here. So that makes this 4. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, lots of different ways I could set up those proportions. I could go left, right. I could go 8 over X equals four over six, left, right, left, right. I could go top, bottom, top, bottom, which would be eight over four equals X over six. I could go right, left, right, left, bottom, top, bottom, top. I just can't go eight to six and four to X like that. I would probably pick the second one just because I can simplify eight over four pretty easily. This would be two to one and then cross multiply. So X would equal 12. You would get the same answer here. I could simplify two and three. 24 would equal two X and X would equal 12. So both ways you would get the same thing. So DA is 12. Questions on that one? So how many of you have found yourself like when you're taking your, your test screenshotting the question, pulling into notability and having to write over that diagram. Have you had to do that yet? Yeah. That's, I think, the challenge between not having a paper copy in geometry, like in a paper copy, we write all over that thing. So I would always say like with stuff like this, that might be easier. Don't try to do that stuff in your head. Try to like screenshot that picture or duplicate that picture, draw it out on a piece of paper, whatever you need to do so that you can add on to, top, to the top of that. Questions on example one. All right, so that's the first theorem, triangle proportionality theorem, where you have a parallel side and it divides it into two parts. Okay, the corollary to that, the corollary just means something that's easily determined from that theorem, says if there's three parallel lines intersecting two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. All right, so if I'm looking at the diagram that's there, BC over CD would equal AF over FE. So I went right, left, top to bottom. Okay, but with these again, just like with the last ones, there's lots of different ways to set these up. I could go top, bottom, top, bottom, right, left, right, left, left, right, all the way. I just can't crisscross. So let's just, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna say that this is X, this is Y, this is Z, and this is M. So I can say X over Z equals Y over M. I could go top, bottom, top, bottom. I could say left, right, left, right. So X over Y equals Z over M. Uh, 
I could go right, left, right, left. Y over X equals M over Z. And I could go bottom top, bottom top. So M over Y equals Z over X. I could go in any of those orders. The only thing I can't do is crisscross and put X with M and Y with Z. I can't set those proportions up. But everything else you can set up. And this one doesn't have a name. So if you're gonna use this in a proof, you would just say um, three parallel lines intersect two transversals, divides them proportionally. Questions on this one? Okay, here's an application of that. So example two says if A is two, B is three, C is five, then D is what? So I'm trying to find D. Notice that these parallel marks have to be there. In order for this to work, those lines have to be parallel. So what's one proportion you could set up from this? Good. 2 over 3 equals 5 over x. So we want to, if you want to make that x, you can keep it d as well. What's another one you could set up? Good. 2 over 5 equals 3 over D. I would say those are probably the most common. I don't know because we read left, right. I think we tend to go left, right, left, right, or top, bottom, top, bottom. But you could also go 5 over 2 equals X over 3. You could also do 3 over 2 equals X over 5. Any of those work. None of them simplify, so it doesn't really matter. I think that they're all probably about the same on level. So let's just solve that first one. 2 over 3 equals D over, or 5 over D. Cross multiply, I get 2D equals 5 times 3. 2D equals 15, and D is going to equal 15 over 2. So again, if it was like a decimal, you could leave that as 17 and a half, or 7 and a half or 7.5, but for test purposes, you'll leave it as a simplified fraction, and you'll type it in as 15 plus 2. So if this was a, let's say an SAT question, if it's in the open boxes, obviously if it's multiple choice, you'd know how to be formatted. But if it was in the uh, multiple choice section, I mean the formatted section where you can enter things in where they give you the little boxes and then you plug them in it would take 15 slash 2 as an answer it would also take 7 space 1 half as an answer it would also take 7.5 as an answer so those kind of formatted boxes it will take any of those all right let's look at b so i'm gonna again erase this off and go to B. If A is 4 and B is 8, C is 5, what is C plus D? So now we've got options here. One thing I could do is set up my proportion as 4 to the whole thing would equal 5 to the whole thing, which is our X. Or we could simply just solve for D and then in the end make sure I add that to 5 to get this whole thing. So just keep in mind that your answer is going to be that whole side. So if I did that, probably the easiest way would be 4 to 8 equals 5 to D. And this simplifies to 1 over 2. So I get D equals 10. But again, be careful, it's not asking for just D, it's asking for C plus D, which means I've gotta take the five and the 10 and add them together to get my total. Okay, last one for this section and for the chapter is the triangle angle bisector theorem. So now we've got an angle being bisected inside a triangle. If a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, 
Then it divides this opposite side into two segments proportional to the other two sides. All right, so now I've got, obviously, the only way this works is if my angle is divided in half. So you'll either see those congruency marks or you'll see something like DB bisects angle ADC, something like that, in which you'd know it's a bisector. And then if that's the case, AB over BC is equal to AD over DC. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give these letters just so it's a little bit easier. Let's, again, call this. Let's call this X, Y, M, N, so it's not to confuse the A and the B. And just like before, there's more than one way to set this up. So we went left to right on the segment that was cut in half, or that, that was cut into proportion, so I can say A over Y, I'm sorry, X over Y, would equal M over N. That's the way the initial one is set up. I can e also do like, these two, M to X, so the side to the segment over, or would equal the side to the segment here, which would be N to Y. I can do this direction, Y to X, would equal N to M. Or I can do N to y would equal m to x. So just notice that wherever you're putting the side, the other side has to go in the same space. And wherever you're putting the portion of the side that's cut into parts has to go together. Just like the other two, what I cannot do is crisscross. I can't put m with y and n with x. I can't crisscross. And again, this originates with an angle bisector, so this is called the triangle angle bisector theorem. Questions on those? All right, so here's the last example, application of that. This time it says to find X. So notice that I've got my angles marked as congruent, otherwise nothing works. The relationships I can set up are here and here. This one's X. So let's call this Y so that we can find that part first. And then we will add that to the 10 to get X. So I can go side to segment, 12 to 10, would equal side to segment 24 to Y. Or I could go segment to segment 10 to Y and side to side going left to right, so it has to go in the same order, equals 12 to 24. Either of those works, you could go right to left, I could go Y to 10 and 24 to 12. I could go 24 to Y and 12 to 10, either way, okay. You, got, you kind of have that choice. So the easiest one to simplify is this one because this becomes one half. And then just cross multiply. Y would equal 20. So now I know that this, clean up this stuff. What we made Y is 20. And if it's asking for X, how do I find it? Good. So 10 plus 20 means X is 30. Questions? On anything we covered, 7, 4, 7, 5, 7, 6. Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes left. What I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the option of what you could do. You could either work on that packet, the seven four to seven six packet, uh, for the next 15 minutes, and I'll just hang on in case you've got questions. Or I can take you through the review of seven, like the notes that you would want to overview the whole chapter, so that you can. It'll help you with the review. Which would you prefer? Option one.
time to just work on the packet. Option two, I'll take you through the notes on the review. So how many of you would prefer to work on the packet? How many of you would prefer the chapter review? Oh crap, it was one or the other ladies. I only got one vote. The review? Yes. Blink once for yes or twice for no. Okay, all right. So if you want to get a fresh sheet, this is where we're gonna kind of condense everything into one note. Hopefully this is helpful for when you go to take your test, okay? All right, so, so we're gonna take through basically everything you covered today and yesterday, which is seven, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I won't go too in depth on the stuff that we just covered so that, you know, you could, because we just did those examples, but I'll start in the beginning with the ratio and proportions. So seven, one was ratio and proportions. Um, this is basically where you're simplifying ratios. Um, you've gotta make sure you change your units, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm so old school, I remember King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. My sons have now told me that that's not nice, right, to kill off King Henry. What do you guys remember? What does he use? King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Is now the PC way. We're not allowed to kill off King Henry anymore. Um, but the usually obviously stands for a unit, which would be a meter, a liter, a gram, something like that. That's what fills that middle spot. So you could get something super easy, like 5x over 10xy, and you would be simplifying this. So I can cancel through the x's, and then I can simplify the five as one and two, and I'd get one over two y. So if I wanted to simplify five x, I would get one over two y, just simplifying a fraction there. In that second example, the units are different. So we've got, a, hey, hey, Jack. Boy, you can't play there. No, you're too loud. In the room or outside, those are your options. Okay, 5G to 6KG is different units, so I've got to change them. I always want to change the larger into the smaller, so if I'm going to go from kilograms to grams, which would be the U, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, so I move my decimal three places. This becomes 5 grams to 6, 1, 2, 3 grams. Now the units are the same. And I'm just gonna simplify, so I don't need the unit anymore. So five goes into 6,001, two, zero, zero, so one to 1,200. Just make sure your units are the same. That's probably the trickiest part of a simplifying of the ratio. Then in this section, you got things like little word problems, little mini word problems that said something about a ratio. So for example, the ratio of supplementary angles is three to five. What's the measure of each angle? So what do we know about supplementary angles? 180, right? So I would say three X plus five X equals 180. If it had said complementary, then it would have been what? 90, yeah, good. If it had said the ratio, the extended ratio, so it's three things of the angles inside a triangle, I would do the three with the X equals 180, okay? So there, that's what's gonna change, the type of information they give you there. So this becomes eight X equals 180, and then divide both sides by eight. So 180 over eight, could be 90 over four or 45 over two. And that's as simplified as you would leave it. Oh, lied, lied, lied. Because this says, what's the measure of each angle? Not what X is. So three times 45 over two and five times 45 over two. And actually most of the time, these are gonna be in decimal format because it's an actual angle measurement. So this would be 135 over two or 67.5. And this would be 225 over two or 
and 112.5. questions on that one. So there will be some sort of a word problem like that where you've got to figure it out or there could be some sort of word problem like that. And that is pretty much it for 7-1. 7-1 was kind of just your basic ratios simplifying a couple different examples of the word problems. All right, then came 7-2. This was your property of proportion. So this is when we learned how to start tweaking proportions, like which way can we change them around. If I had A over B equals C over D, and we had something called the cross product property, this is where we cross multiply. So this would be A times D equals C times B, which is how we're gonna solve proportions. The reciprocal property just says flip them. So this would be B over A equals D over C. And the denominator addition property is where we add the denominator. So it would be A plus B over B equals C plus D over D. Do you end at 11.15 or 11.30? Is it 11.15? Huh. Property proportions, those are them. So basically, you, you'll get given some sort of proportion, and then it will ask you, um, it'll give you half the proportion, and you have to fill in the other half. So if it looks something like this, where it said 2 thirds equals x over y, and then you're given part of it. So for example, if I was, if you were given 3 halves, what would it equal? If you were given 2 over x, what would it equal if you were given two plus three over three or five over three, what would it equal? So those are the applications of those that you can use. So if it was three over two, then you would flip the other side and it'd be y over x. If it was two over x, stop. then it would be three over y. And if it was 2 plus 3 over 3, it would be x plus y over y. So you'll be given your initial proportion, and then you'll be given part of the other proportion, and you'll fill it in. Now think these are going to be fill in the blank, so the answer here would be a y slash x like that. The answer here would be a 3 slash y like that. And then this one's going to be x plus y in parentheses because you have to group them slash y. It, okay, let me. Okay, so that last one, you would group together the x plus y, oh sorry, not like that. You would group together the x plus y in parentheses slash y. And then, of course, in this section, you're going to have where you cross multiply and you solve. That's it. Okay? Um, so there were lots of examples on that. Then came 7-3, which is your similar polygon. So this was any similar pair of shapes. It doesn't have to be triangles. They could be similar quadrilaterals. They could be similar hexagons, whatever it is. The definition of similar is that the corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are proportional. So if I gave you a name to these, like if this was A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, or so if you had a picture or if you had a statement like A, B, C, D is similar to E, F, G, H, then you could be asked to match up the angles and then also the sides. So if I said angle A is congruent to what? You'd give me angle E. Angle B would be congruent to angle F. Angle C would be congruent to angle G. And angle D would be congruent to angle H. 
And then you can do the same for the proportions of the sides. So I could say AB over BC, no, sorry, AB over EF would equal BC over FG, CD over GH, and AD over EH. So the order of the letters is really important there. If you were given this on a test question, it would say something like angle A is congruent to angle what? And your answer is just E. If it said up a proportion like AB over EF equals C, B, C. So if it said something like this, AB over EF equals B, C over question mark, then that question mark would be that side FG. So it won't give it to you, like, or it could give you part and you would just, I have, there's one question where it's like a drop down and you have to pick which one goes which one. The other thing in this section was your scale factor. So remember to pay attention to the order. So if it says, what's the scale factor of like small to large or A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H, then I would go through and figure out which pair of sides I have a value for both of them, right? Three goes with Z, that's not gonna work. X goes with 15, that's not gonna work. Seven goes with Y, that's not gonna work. The only one you have the side lengths for both would be eight and 12. So eight to 12 would reduce to two to three. And that's how you'll write your scale factor with the colon in between. If it had said large to small or E, F, G, H to A, B, C, D, be really careful and pay attention to the order of the letters there, it would be three to two. And then if it said something like solve for X and Y and Z, so let's do all three, we'll set up all three. Then we said my scale factor, if I go left to right or small to large, is two to three. That would equal, X goes with 15, so it would be X to 15. Then two to three would equal, Y goes with the seven, but the seven's on the smaller one, so it would be seven to Y. And then the last one would be two to three equals and the z's with the three but the three's on the left so it's three to z so just be really careful make sure if you're going small polygon to large polygon for one of for your scale factor or for one of the fractions that you continue in that pattern for the other two so from there i just cross multiply and solve for the missing side are you guys okay on that do you need me to work through the cross multiplying or you feel confident in the cross multiplying okay so just the setup just make sure you're going if you're going left to right that you follow that process. All right, so that was seven three, right? Then seven four. And seven point five I'm gonna put together. These were your similar triangles. So this is angle angle similarity. Side angle, side similarity. And side, side, side similarity. So this would have to be two pairs of angles. This would have to be a pair of angles. and two sides. And this would have to be all three sides. The angle angles a lot of times will involve some sort of like parallel lines where you're looking for corresponding angles or alternate interior angles or reflexive angles or something like that.
and your proof is going to come from that stuff. So just think about the fact that you're going to have to prove something similar in that, in one of those ways. And then the last one was 7, 6 that we just finished. So 7, 6 had three theorems. Well, two theorems and a corollary, but the first one was the parallel. So if you've got two parallel segments, or if you've got a side that is parallel to a segment inside the triangle, then I can say A over B equals X over Y, or a over x equals b over y. You can go top, bottom, left, right, right, left, bottom, top, any of those. Then you had three parallel lines, two transversals, and again you could go a over b equals x over y, or a over X equals B over Y. And the last one is your triangle with an angle bisector. So A over B equals X over Y, or A over X equals B over Y, and again, you can go the other way, X over A, Y over B, you just can't crisscross on any of those three. Yeah? Say that again. Did it freeze again? That's good. All right, I'll even zoom in on it if you wanna take a screenshot. Okay, and then that's it. That's all of chapter seven. So I would say the benefit of, of Corona is that these, these kids don't normally get these notes, right? They gotta memorize all these um, especially the stuff at the bottom. So you guys definitely get that benefit. That's the good news. So try to condense your notes so that you know them well enough that you're not having to spend too much time going through them. And then um, let me know if you've got any questions. If not, I will go over both the assignment and the review tomorrow, and then we'll do those warm-ups of the last three sections tomorrow together. And then you'll take your test probably about an hour in. All right, ladies. For real, have a good day. All right. I'll see you in the morning. Bye. Have a great day. Let me guess, he was too rough? Mm-hmm, but can you come? Hang on just a second. No, she what I 
are these raisins? Yep. Those are, yeah, they're golden raisins. Better than the deadest of all dead. It's a little brutal. I know. Right. Better than the deadest of all the deadest. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Did have they answered? No. Yes. I gotta plug my in. I don't know what to do about this. Was this is this like your iPad? No, this is school's iPad. Tell them that the iPad is bad. But they oh. forgot I had it, so I was gonna make me turn it back in because we know I'm just not.